Welcome back, welcome back. As we can see, we have a new base design right here in front of us. Boom, you know? Looks very, very similar to, to a lot of my other designs because, well, I always put the same front airlock on this thing. If we go up here, one thing this thing has that a lot of, them, uh, that a lot of the other ones don't have is it has no squares. There's no squares on this besides this, besides the, um, the peak downs, right? But like, when it actually comes to like, the core layout and design, it's all just triangles, which I really, really like. Because I wanted to make this as cheap as possible, okay? I wanted to put out a base design of my own that has like my flavor of base choices and base designs that i made in the past but just make a cheaper version of them right so that's exactly what this is mainly for solo and duo players could it be for trios eh, yeah but you're gonna have to sacrifice some of that vault space to get a third bag down right so as you can see we have three external tcs i'm gonna be getting into how to do little things like that at the end of the video if the video seems a little bit long it's probably because I'm uh, going to be adding in a little bit of bonus tips at the end. So so you come in here, sheet door, sheet door. Nothing new. If you've seen my base designs, this is all, you know, nothing new to you. And I actually just now destroyed this door. That's a great, great start to, you know, the base uh, showcase, Dylan. Just good, good job with that. So you come in here, two garage doors you're greeted with, boom. Way to get upstairs right there. Way to get closer to the vault right here, right? You have a window loot room right here. Cool. And actually, with all these boxes inside of any window loot room at all in this game, always try to lock them. It's all, well, honestly, any box anywhere you should always be trying to lock just because it's going to slow down raiders regardless. So if you have extra wood laying around or extra metal frags if you're a team with code locks, be sure to make locks for your boxes. It's going to really, really help out uh, delay raiders with finishing up the, bra uh, the raid on you, right? So you come in here, you have two garages that I just ended up opening. Two furnaces down here. These are more of early game furnaces. We have a late game uh, furnace room upstairs. But I'm just showing these right here just to let you know. Okay, early game. I do have, you know, some furnaces right here that are nice and accessible. Okay, cool. Then you have four more boxes right there. So you already have eight boxes, eight boxes. You drop down inside the vault. This is the main thing that's different about most of my designs. It's always a different vault layout, right? And this one is all made out of triangles. Uh, and as you can see, we have a window uh, room right there for TC this time around. Compared to last time, we didn't even have this. It was just inside of a, a square, right, with like our Tier 3 and stuff. But now we actually have this. And we have this ring that goes around it because if people just drill directly to TC, boom, boom, then they get TC. They're, even if they pick up this window that's right here, this frame thing is going to be blocking them, right? And then your externals will save you from them placing a bag into the inside, right? So that's why your externals are going to be very, 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 very important, which I'm going to be getting in on how to make those exact ones out there uh, toward the end of the video. So this right here is the layout, though. And as you can see, we can fit two bags. You can destroy one bag. Like, if you're a solo player, destroy one bag. You can put a furnace right there. Four boxes, two small boxes. And again, I recommend everyone, if you think there's a better way to have this vault layout and fit more stuff, all that... Feel free to remix it into your own version. Um, and yeah, you know, just have fun with it. And feel free to also join my Discord and share the changes that you would make to this design in the building channel. Because I'm always down to learn from you guys and, you know, get ideas and stuff. So, yeah. And also, actually, a small box is definitely going to be able to fit, obviously, underneath the Tier 3. So, boom, there's that. Now, if we end up going back out here, right? You come back out here, then boom, you go upstairs. So uh, over here, you have the research table, repair bench room. This could also just be a battery room if you want or whatever, right? I have the, my battery right over here, and there is a reason for it being exactly right there. So this right here is going to be like where you do your electricity, then you have your locker right there, which is nice, right? Then you come right here, armored single. I like to have single doors throughout my base because they just they open and shut a lot, lot faster than a garage door. So if you're dealing with an online raid, like you need to go in and out of a door, single doors are a lot better than garage doors. So adding some singles into the mixture is always nice. So then you come over here, you have the ladder hatch that goes up higher. You also have another four box loot room here. You come over here, another four box loot room here. So this should have a, a good amount of space for you. And this right here is like your late game furnace room if you're someone that likes to put down a shit ton of furnaces. If not, and you're just going to be rocking large furnaces sooner than later, this could also be an, uh, like an electricity room, an extra four box loot room, right? It can really be whatever you want. Uh, and then, yeah, then you have like your locker right here to get a quick set on and stuff. And then we keep on climbing up, and then we are officially here at the window floor. The window floor is nothing crazy. Very, very basic. I actually, I have two doors right here that you can, you know, like if you're getting online rated from like that side of the base, you can come right here, scale down the wall here, and then boom, you're out here, right? So I don't know, like just, just little things like that are uh, sometimes needed, I feel like. Instead of just having an extra window there, why not add a door, right? I just, I don't know, I feel like that's, it can be a nice way to change things up. Anyways, that's pretty much the base, and then up top here, you can always make like a helicopter landing spot and whatever, easily, right? That's always easily done. Add like a 
quick thing right here to land your mini copter on and then you can make like a garage for it right here or something right uh i don't really ever do that as a solo player usually i don't have a mini copter as a solo i, I like to keep it on the down low okay yeah, I mean, anyway, that's pretty much the base. That's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You know, we like to keep it simple over here, right? And guess what? You get to start out of this base as well. You get to start out of it and then expand up to something higher and better, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess let's uh, go ahead and get started with this whole thing, and I'll show you guys how to make the starter. By the way, to those that are curious, down there at the bottom left right now, I have it all zoomed in. Feel free to pause. That's the cost of everything that's here, including the external TCs, so... Yeah, keep that in mind. You're going to be wanting to find a somewhat flat spot. It doesn't have to be crazy flat, but, you know, just imagine the base in its final state that I just now showed you and, and the size of it. Try, you know, try your best. With time, you'll learn these things, though. Like, if you're a new player, you're going to learn with time. I mean, like, if, with this right here being completely flat, I'm going to be starting out with this right here being really, really low, right? Then we're going to get into triangle, 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 triangle. Very, very easy. You just literally just wrap triangles around on that side. So, so easy, right? Then you go like this, this. This right here is what we have so far. Incredibly basic and simple. That's why I just love my bases, man. Because I feel like they just make bases super simple again, you know? And, like, I'm all for, you know, evolving as builders and floor stacking and all that. But guess what? That's complicated for a lot of different people to do. And plus, usually with a floor stack base, it's not going to be your starter base. From my knowledge. Yet again, I'm not a floor stacker. I'm not a professional floor stacker. Okay, I'm a very, very simple man when it comes to this whole thing. So this right here is what we have so far, though. Very, very easy. Very, very simple, right? Easy. Now, keep in mind, this wall and this wall right here are going to be made wood temporarily. Later on, you're going to be destroying them with tools, and it's going to be a part where you end up expanding out with your base, right? Everything else, though, can be upgraded to stone. And then you can go to put down a sheet door slash wood door right there. And then put down a door frame right here. This right here is also going to be wood, though. Because eventually, and later on, that's going to be a double door frame where a garage door goes, right? So we want to just have that temporarily be, be a wood door. Uh, wood door frame. And you can go ahead and add a another sheet door right there. And then add this half wall and then a full wall. Then destroy the half wall. Boom. Do that right there. So, boom, you have this right here, right? All right. We're going to instantly just go like this, 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 right? Very, very easy. Just like that. We can upgrade that right there to stone. This right here, you can leave twig for now. But, yeah, it's pretty much just like that right there is just going to be our thing that we have to where if they just drill through right here. And then you have a window down here. They're, uh, they're not going to be able to get through as easily because there's going to be that, you know, twig right there. Which you can just upgrade that to stone instantly if you want, right? <clears throat> and then after that point, you know, again, uh, if you want to, you know, go back and see exactly how I furnish this whole thing, you can always go back and watch the tour. I'm going to be do just doing very, very basic furnishing here dur uh, during the build, right? And then inside of here will be where your bag's at. And also your uh, your workbenches and stuff like that, obviously, right? Like your workbench will go right over there. Uh, maybe a second bag, you know, whatever. And then let's say that you're ready to get off. How does a vault work? Okay, well, first things first that I'd recommend is get off. Upgrade both these right here to sheet. It's only going to cost 200 metal frags to do that. That's just to avoid people coming in here and pickaxing down and easily getting inside your stuff. Because you can pick through the top of stone a lot easier than metal, right? And I have to say this for all the newer players that are, that are possibly watching, right? So after you made sure that you have your bag in, down inside here, because if you forget to put down your bag, then you're fucked. You're not going to get back in here, right? You get up here. You do this. You put down that twig right there. Then you put down a floor, then you upgrade that right there to stone. You don't upgrade the twig to stone, you upgrade the top to stone, right? And then as soon as you end up getting in, you're like, oh my god, nice, I'm not raided the next day, right? You hit F1, type kill, you're going to die, and then you're going to spawn on your bag inside here, destroy this, and then boom, you're able to get out again, right? So that's kind of how the vault mechanic works within this, at least this one. So yeah, this right here is how your starter should look from the top. Boom, easy, right? Easy peasy. So now let's say that we're ready to start expanding out, right? You're going to instantly add a triangle here, triangle here. We're going to just get these uh, wood walls out of the way. Because I would recommend getting this done on first day for sure, right? You're going to have a wood wall there, wood wall over here. You're going to add two triangles just like that. Easy, right? So then you're just going to upgrade them to stone. These are just going to be loot rooms, right? You're just going to cover it up pretty much. Add floors there. Add walls here. Boom, boom. And I recommend doing this from the outside first, just so as soon as you destroy this wall, you just you you, uh, you just instantly just have the loot room built, right? And now with your axes, your pickaxes, your salvage swords, your cleavers, just those tools that you've got on your journey so far. Uh, or you can just craft up machetes if you want. Machetes are very, very easy to craft up. You can now destroy 
this and destroy this and then boom now you have extra space to actually work with inside here which is great now you should probably try and get the airlock complete for this because well one door in and they instantly have a loot room right here if you have any stuff there right so we don't want that so what we're instantly gonna do is just add three triangles boom that's the airlock layout right simple that's why we rock this thing so consistently because it's just unbelievably easy you're gonna have a frame there door there wall wall floor 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 right just like that upgraded all to stone instantly but be sure to leave this right here open because this is going to be your way to get on top of your roof right and then you can also add a second door right here and then boom sheet door boom sheet door now we have another airlock to work with and i recommend having this door right here open up into that door just so if you die with both doors open no one can actually get in right it's really really good notice on how we did that exactly with these doors right here you die with both your doors open boom no one can really get in right that's what we prefer. So now, assuming that you already have a tier 1 bench, you have some metal cooking, whatever, you should be able to afford to make a metal shop front, right? This right here. I like to make one of these. Some people recommend me to just make a uh, strengthened glass window right here, but some people like to trade at their base, right? Not only is this just a larger window than that, but this also allows you to just trade with people outside your base if you're into that, right? And then in order to get up higher, you actually can't put down a floor right here. So what you can do, uh, as soon as you end up moving uh, your tier 1 out of here and you have a tier 2 bench down or you have like an extra furnace, like you could just move one of your furnaces over here, right? Place down a furnace right there and then boom, you're able to just get up and get up here, right? And up here, you're just going to want to add this here. All of this right here can just be stone instantly. It's all good. And then a double sheet door will go right there. Boom. So the question is, what's the next step? Well, at this point, I'm hoping that you're going to start getting a sheet vault, you know, made. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I would start upgrading a lot of the stuff here, uh, especially all the outer walls and foundations of your loot room, right? So that's everything that's out here. Um, all these walls right here, all the walls on the inside pretty much. And this wall right here, you're going to have to go to, the, go to the outside and upgrade. Same thing with the foundation. So be sure to not fuck yourself over and put honeycomb down before you end up doing this, right? Uh, shit, even armored. Like, you're going to need to make this right here armored and this right here armored before getting any honeycomb down at all, right? So you have to be really, really careful about that. The, the top one, you can make sheet if you want. But yeah, you're going to be wanting to make this right here high call, this right here high call before you start placing down stone honeycomb, right? Yeah, 38 high call you're going to need just to instantly get TC nice and armored up from the outside, which is probably already just a necessary thing, right, to have your TC a bit more secure. We can even upgrade the top right there to armor. Boom, easy, right? So, uh, yeah, then also make sure that you have these inner foundations here upgraded. Then after that point, you have a full sheet vault. Then each day when you log out, obviously, like we've done before, you would upgrade this floor right here to sheet. Just so it costs as much to boom through that as it would one of these walls. You wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't want to make that right there stone. But also, with your high call, I'd also recommend upgrading these front foundations to armor it as soon as possible. Just because that'll even make it more annoying and difficult uh, to, uh, you know, pick through and whatever. So, yeah, so that right there is the, is the design so far. Pretty much the vault is literally just this, like, hexagonal shape. This is a hexagon, right? Sorry, I'm not, I might not be that good with my shapes. I apologize, okay? So, that right there is what we got so far. So what's the next step? Okay, probably second floor and some honeycomb, right? So honeycomb's incredibly simple. Pretty much, there's just three triangles that you do for honeycomb. This, this, this. Easiest thing in the world, right? Like, I just love easy bases, right? It's just nice to just have a base that's just easy to make. I just love it. Now, keep in mind, like, if you have a lot of sheet, you could always upgrade this, like, all this stuff right here uh, to sheet as well, right? You could always do that. But you're probably going to be starting out with stone just because it's a lot easier and cheaper, right? And who knows? I don't know how much metal you have at this point. But then pretty much up here uh, on the top, once you come up here, you literally just do stone walls around the entire thing, right? It's easy, you know? You're following me. I know that you got this. So it's easy peasy. This is nothing, right? I was just start upgrading all of it to stone. Literally all of it, right? And you can add all these. All these right here can be stone because you can upgrade these later above the base. And then boom, boom, boom. Upgrade all these right here to stone. You can upgrade those later to sheet as well if you want, right? So now we're going to go ahead and be getting started with the upstairs loot rooms. How do we divide all of it up and how does this work? Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. So you instantly come out of this door right here. This wall right here, down, right? 
You take a right, this wall goes right here. Boom, easy. This right here, single door, easy. This right here, that wall there. That's pretty much the entire layout of how this works. Your front door is right there, and then we have kind of a shape like this going, right? And then also, obviously, start getting the ceiling down for this thing. This spot right here, on the other side of this single door, is going to be our way up. So don't mess with that too, too much yet. And then, I don't know if you're going to have ladder yet. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get ladder and find it. So, how are you going to get up here and expand more? Well, you could easily just go like this, this, right? You can still get in and out of the room and whatever. So, this right here can be your temporary way up if you want. And then up here... We're just going to simply just go like that. It's very, very simple, okay? It's easy peasy. And then up here, you can put down... I'm going to assume that, that uh, you have garage doors at this point, honestly, okay? If you don't, make a double sheet door. It's all good. Then you have that. And I'm just going to assume, again, that you have ladders now. You might not, so then just keep that twig right there if that's the case. But if you do, your ladder's just going to be going down right there. Or a ladder hatch, whichever one you really have, right? And then, at this point, I would recommend starting to upgrade a lot of these different floors right here to sheet. It's cheap. It costs 50 metal frags per triangle. So I would just start doing that. Just to avoid people coming from the top and easily splashing down through stone. Um, and then also, if you are starting to use all these rooms up here, start trying your best to get all these walls right here upgraded the sheet as well because this is a very very compact base so it's not you know <laughs> it's it like you know, uh, you know like we don't have a whole lot of layers of honeycomb and stuff protecting this so we need to be trying to upgrade and cook up metal as fast as possible right or buy metal frags from outposts with scrap that's a really good method if you have a shit ton of comps and like no metal go recycle all that shit and drop all the scrap on metal frags at outposts it's a really really good way to go about it so we're gonna start focusing on upgrading a lot of this different stuff right here to sheet right if you can't don't worry about it you don't have to do it right now but it should definitely be one of your priorities and then again these are box loot rooms so try and get boxes down inside here before you end up getting a window down and also i would recommend trying to get code locks down on these and having your teammates off on them right so code locks key locks you know whichever ones you use try and do that just because it's gonna assist people in raiding you not only slower but it's also just gonna make it uh, make it more annoying to get the loot especially down here on the bottom sometimes so uh yeah so then boom you have that right there right you have like your couple loot rooms over here right here is gonna be like your uh your research table again you can go back to the to the actual tour to furnish everything but there is a secret and i'm hiding it right here as i make the base because if anyone is looking up this base design and trying to raid you and be like okay is this a youtube base if so i'm gonna go look at it they're gonna see the showcase of it most likely right they might not see this part so that's why during the tour i didn't show one of the dopest things with the base which is a secret loot room within the base which is back here right so and this is a very 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 secure spot just by default Keep in mind, this is nowhere near TC. So let's just start saying that, you know, we're upgrading all this stuff right here. We have our loot rooms downstairs at this point, right? Yeah, be sure to be getting all this stuff right here upgraded the sheet, though. A lot of it, right? And then, again, like with this temporary door right here that, that uh, we left wood, you would destroy this right here with machetes or whatever tools you have. And then put down a double door frame. And be sure to be trying to upgrade a lot of your double door frames to stone, or uh, to sheet, sorry, not stone. Just so people can't see them through walls, right? Because, for example... So, let's say we have this. People can see the stone frame through the sheet. So, then they know, okay, yeah, dude, double door frame right there. So, that, so that means something, right? If you have this right here, actually upgraded the sheet, they can't see anything. So that's why sheet frames are really, really important. Besides for things like this, people can obviously see this frame. People can obviously see, like, if you have a garage door right here, it can be a stone frame. That's fine. And I actually recommend to have that shit kept as a stone frame just because then if they're looking at it, they're going to be like, oh, dude, he has stone frames. And they start looking around and, and then they're like, oh, dude, I'm not seeing any stone frames anywhere. I think that it might all be open. But little do they know, you have the metal frames up here, such as right here. Um, you could add that garage door there. So now we're going to go to get into like one of the most important things, right? We have a lot of the basic uh, stuff complete here. We're still going to be doing the top floor, but we're going to be getting into the secret loot room now, right? And uh, yeah, I, I waited again to include it here at, uh, as we build it, just so it's not shown in the tour to where raiders don't know exactly where everything is, right? Which honestly, that could have thrown some people away. If I kept the secret loot room there, that could have made more people stay and be more interested in the base. But to you that's actually staying through with me here, I appreciate you. And uh, maybe you're going to like this, right? 
So this wall right here that's backwards, upgrade it to sheet, rotate it, right? Just so that just so that wall is not pickable into. Then right here, you're gonna have a locker, right? A locker is pretty much required for this loot room because everyone wants a locker spot inside the base, right? So and we already went through with that with the tour, so you should already be kind of prepared for that. Uh, so pretty much back here, we're gonna have this, we're gonna have this, destroy this, upgrade this right here. It can just be stone, or wood, or sheet, it really doesn't matter in this scenario. Uh, it could be whatever you want, that floor right there, right? Then you can place down a quick box, uh, up top. You might need to place down a box temporarily down here in order to get really, really good placement here, but yeah, you just wanna place this right here as far back as possible. Just like that. And then down here, you can pick up that box right there underneath you and then place it down. Like right there, right? So now you have two large boxes there. Key in mind, this secret loot room can fit up to two bags. But the thing is, it could also fit a garage door, which is like, what? There's a garage door inside my secret loot room too? Yes, that that is a thing in this loot room. Uh, we're going to have this garage door face that way specifically, right? Now you might think, oh, Dylan, it's, it's poking through right there. What am I ever going to do? You could actually pick up this garage door right here as well. And you could face it in that direction to where it's actually impossible to see the other one poking through to where then they're not even going to know about that necessarily, right? So make sure this garage door that comes upstairs is facing that way so that raiders don't see that one poking through right there, right? <clears throat> and so then right here is going to be, uh, well, not the locker yet. I guess we can go in and get these bags placed down, right? So we're going to have a bag placed down like right here as far over there as we can possibly do. Then we're going to do one. Just like that, right? And then the locker. This might take a little bit of tries to do, but it shouldn't be that difficult. And then again, we're going to have that garage door right there. To where even if they get inside of here, they're still going to have to go through a garage door to get to the loot no matter what, which I love, right? And so, like, this is a spot where I definitely recommend you to put some of some of your solid stuff at. Not all of your solid stuff, because there are going to be some people that know, that know the design and that have made the design that are going to be like, hey, we should just force C4 into this and just see what they have. So don't put near all of your good stuff inside of here, right? Spread it out throughout the base. Put some in different, un uh, like, uh, you know, like, unpredictable spots. Because from my experience with this base design, people love to raid through the back, right? Some people like to raid through the front sometimes, but... It's a, uh, it's kind of a rare occurrence, right? So a lot of people are going to be raiding you from like back here and back here, right? Which means that this front point is very, very safe. Well, safe compared to the rest of the base. So then up here with this, you place down that locker, right? Then you're going to need a window. If the window goes red, you need to put the locker a little bit further back, right? So let me do that, and it's like, okay, they can still see over there, Dylan. What the hell are you doing, man? You put down the vertical window embrasure, though, right? And then you flip it to the other side, then boom, right? And now some people might easily realize this. They might easily notice it. Um, if they have TC, they can easily just come over here, pick this up, and empty out the locker. Oh, and also, don't put a lock on the locker. Otherwise, then they're going to break it and easily get in there. You want the locker to be unlocked and accessible so that they don't have to break it and then they're not going to see behind it, right? But this is why I put the battery there in the tour. Because if the battery's here and your electricity's hooked up right here, they're going to think a lot, lot less of this spot because it's so compact right there. They're not going to think as much about it, right? So I feel like that's that's why that right there is a really, really good battery spot. It might not be the most spacious electricity room, but again, we're talking about a very, very cheap and compact base here. So that's kind of <laughs> why we're doing this, right? But yeah, then, you know, start filling up this entire thing with garage doors, repair bench, research table right there, furnish room, fill this all up with doors and stuff. Now we're going to be getting started with the top, right? The top is very, very simple. Triangle, triangle, square, square, right? Just like that. Easy, right? This right here, door, door. And then literally starting from right over here, you just do square, 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 square. Easy. And then pretty much... You just want to put down a single door on the right side of each of these things, right? On the right side of the square each time. Just like this. Or the right side of the of the peak, let's just say. Because, yeah, this one right here is actually on a square. So, boom, that's that, right? We have that right there complete. Now you can go in and start adding windows to a lot of this. And boom. Easy, dude. Let's go. So now I'm going to go and upgrade all this twig right here to stone, then I'll be right back. Boom. Now complete. Now I just need to also get the ceiling of this whole thing down, right? After we get this extra way out right here, right? Because up here is going to be where we get onto our tip-top roof. So we want to make sure that we have that right there available for us. And this spot right here, you could easily just make it to where you have this, this, and then destroy this, and you can add your frame back. 
just so you have a way to get up if you don't have ladder for some reason yet. Listen, I get it, man. Getting ladder can be annoying sometimes, so. Boom. Garage door there. Now you can go ahead and start just kind of branching this right here off of this. Okay, boom. And then after that, obviously, upgraded all the stone. So, boom. Now we have that, right? Besides this. Now the question is, how many single doors do we need for this? You are going to need exactly eight sheet doors for this top bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and place down all those right now. And, and now keep in mind, like, when you place down these doors, make sure that they are open. Then they actually serve as peak downs. You can peek down. You can see around the entire base with these peak downs, of course. Something that we always make sure that we do with our base design, right? We need those outer peaks, right? And then with all the windows up here, I mean, it's really your preference on if you want horizontal or vertical embrasures. Or you can do both, right? Um... So, you know, do whatever you really want. You're going to need exactly 14 windows for this, okay? You're going to need exactly 14 windows. Let's hope that I didn't, you know, get the counting wrong, but... Yeah, boom, now you have this. Now, at this point, obviously, I would start trying to sheet up your honeycomb, obviously. That's, like, just, like, you know, you just have to do that. And then I'm going to show you guys quickly how to make the, uh, you know, the external TC that you can branch off on whatever side you really, really want. And... Yeah, then that'll pretty much be it. So this right here is just going to be like just like a small bonus tip, right? Let's say they live right here. Okay. Can we place this all the way down here? I'm not too sure. Let's just act like we have to go off right here, right? Because not everyone might have low enough ground right there. So you're going to instantly go like this right here to make the, uh, make the external TC, right? And then you're going to go back with that right there. To keep that triangle nice and close. Then you're going to go square. So pretty much you're just going to go out with squares until you have a spot where you... Uh, don't have TC. This spot right here, I was actually just now trying with a triangle. It's not really letting me place down this external TC. So I'm just going to go one more square over, which is 100% A-okay. -okay. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Go until you can actually get a TC down on the triangle, right? So then you're going to go half wall, half wall, uh, full wall here. Triangle up there. Upgraded all the stone. You can pretty much keep this stone forever. But you can eventually upgrade it to sheet and, like, you know, get more windows or garage doors on it down. Whatever you really want, right? Then we're uh, going to add the TC itself into here. Boom. Easy. Make that right there stone. Okay. And now pretty much the way that this is going to work, we're, uh, since we ended up going out pretty far, we're going to need a four block gap in between a wall and the external TC itself, right? So we're going to have a frame that goes off like this, frame that goes off like this. Then we're going to have a temporary thing right there. Then we're going to connect them just like that, right? So we go like that right there, and then we're going to need to be jumping and upgrading all of these right here. And then all this over here, you're going to want to have sheet. You're going to want to just have all this right here sheet, because you don't want it to get picked apart, and then your external breaks, and it's just not good, right? But yeah, like you can make you can make these around the base. And then also with the externals, as soon as you get rated, like you need to like take your base back and a new main TC down, because if we destroy this right here, right? And then, yeah, like you can see, like, we still have building priv inside of here, but we don't have a main TC, so this thing right here would eventually decay. So pretty much with your uh, TC or your extra TCs that you would have, so pretty much what you would want to do is detach all of these TCs from reaching all the way inside there. So how would you do that? You'd go like this, right here on each of the TCs, keep in mind, okay? Each of the TCs go like that. As you can see, that right there detaches them. So I'm just going to do that with each of them right now. So boom, there's that. Now if we go inside the base after doing that, you can see that we can actually place down our own TC again inside of here, right? Boom, new TC down, lock it up again. Then as soon as you're all ready to get these TCs right here all fixed back up, uh, you're going to need to place down a temporary twig foundation, twig frame, connect, connect. Done, destroy this frame, upgrade, upgrade. And be sure to do that with all of your TCs, reconnect all of them. So yeah, that's kind of how these TCs work and that's why I wanted to show them because they just, you know, they just work out very, very well. So, yeah. You can still connect high walls to, you know, like these door frames right here and stuff. So, like, you can still compound and all that. I'm not going to get too into all that right now, just because the video is going to be a fucking hour long if I do that. But, yeah, that's pretty much this base. Pretty much that's the base, right? Um, go back to the tour to see exactly how everything is furnished, if you want to follow exactly how it's furnished. And overall, yeah, be sure to always have a bag inside your vault. Don't mess that up, because if you end up sealing the vault and, and then, and then uh, you don't have a bag in here, well, you're probably never going to be able to get in here again until it decays or something, right? So, yeah. If you're not making it here all, all the way to this video, comment compact, right? It's a nice compact base of our uh, own flavor into it, right? Because all my bases are very, very similar, but the vault layout is always different. That's what makes it different, right? Um, <clears throat> and be sure to add your own flavor to all this stuff right here, too. This right here is the final design, but... 
be sure to add little things of your own flavor too, you know, like put like a small box right here in the airlock, like right here, put like a little bit of like your juice inside there in case like they completely dodge the airlock as they raid you, you're still gonna have a small box right there with some stuff, right, like just little things like that, right, and yeah, I appreciate you joining me, thank you, thank you, thank you for making it here all the way to the end especially as well, uh, I'm gonna go and enjoy my wipe day, uh, and I'm gonna be rocking this base design for probably a little while throughout my solo season, so... We'll be seeing how it holds up. I mean, I get offline rated all the time, but um, which whichever one of my designs I use, it doesn't really make a difference. I still always get offline rated, but yeah, feel free to, you know, make little adjustments to this. Feel free to, you know, put little ideas and remixes of your own things in my Discord, uh, in the building channel, you know, share your ideas, spread that knowledge, right? And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out and uh, a bye-bye now. Yeah.